Hello there. Welcome to this episode of Force Ghost Conversations. This is your host, Anthony King, and this week I'm joined by Greg McLaughlin, host of the Rebel Base Card podcast, to discuss episode four from the Acolyte titled Day. If you're a fan of the podcast and would like to consider pledging your support, there will be a link in the episode description for you to check out the various tiers offered. Also, please be sure to check out our T Public store to buy some Force Ghost Conversations merchandise. And without further ado, it is time to gather around the campfire for some Force Ghost Conversations. All right, everybody, welcome back to Forest Ghost Conversations. Boy, do we have a great episode for you all today, talking about the fourth episode from the Acolyte titled Day. And of course, I'm joined by my friend Greg McLaughlin from the Rebel Base Card Podcast to break it down in great length and at fun speed so that you all can enjoy um, just a wonderful conversation between the two of us where we really go deep into the themes and the why and the how of the episode um, and just challenge ourselves on what the Acolyte is presenting here so it's a really great conversation. I hope you enjoy listening to it because we had a lot of fun putting it together. So with all that, you know, let's get into some of the news that took place this past week in the Star Wars and Lucasfilm adjacent galaxy. And uh, frankly, there's not a whole lot, I will say, that came out in terms of news for this week. Of course, the Acolyte is releasing every Tuesday evening on for us on the East Coast. Uh, <laughs> the East Coast? What are we talking about, Anthony? The East Coast, 9 o'clock p.m. for me here on the East Coast, 6 o'clock on the Pacific Coast time. Uh, for those on the West Coast. Um, but other than that, the really big news item that I saw was that the volume one of the soundtrack for The Acolyte that was scored by the incredible Michael Abels is now coming to streaming services on June 21st. So if you are a fan of what is being presented so far in The Acolyte, and especially like the music, or perhaps you want to re-listen to the music because maybe you're just so focused on the narrative of the Acolyte so far. This will be great a great opportunity for you to do that. So actually, it's it, time of recording this. It's June 22nd. It's already out. Look at that. I, I forgot what day of the week it is, and I forgot that uh, you know June is flying by at this point. <laughs> we'll be in July before you know. We'll be in August before you know. And then by that point, we'll be in September. Who knows where we're at at this point in the world but it is uh late june at this point it is june 22nd so by the time this episode releases on june 23rd it will certainly have been out on streaming platforms so go check it out if you want to listen to the music from the acolyte and enjoy all that goodness in a deeper sense and of course they had the song that came out uh last week as well by victoria monet which i think was great as well um and uh just loving to see all this acolyte centered infused news into our star wars fan base right now especially with some of the positivity that i've been seeing around twitter uh with with people kind of taking charge about being a more positive force in the community i've really enjoyed seeing that and i think that this conversation with greg is going to amplify that a lot more here where we're coming at it from a, a cozy and fun perspective and just want to have a great time chatting about the acolyte and all of its deeper themes so without further ado let's get into that here uh just on the other side of the short break we will have our conversation with greg mclaughlin for the rebel base card stay tuned folks all right everybody welcome back to force ghost conversations and we are continuing our acolyte discussions here and we are at the pinnacle or not to say the pinnacle but we're, we're about halfway through the acolyte as far as my math is concerned here we're at episode four it's called day which is a, a wild title to begin with. Uh, I think that was my first musing when I pulled up my Disney Plus the other day, and it's like, huh, the episode's just called Day. All right, well, we'll see what happens on this one. Um, so to break down Day, I am actually thrilled to welcome first time to Forest Ghost Conversations. We have Greg McLaughlin from the Rebel Base Card. Greg, how are you doing? And welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. And yeah, I think a lot of us would have lost good money had we bet on what the show title was going to be called. And uh, what's funny is it wasn't until it wasn't that long ago that I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Because oftentimes when when the shows come on, you hit play so fast, you don't even think about the show title mm -hmm. and, or in shows past where they didn't put it up until later. So I was like, oh, yeah, day. Oh, OK. But uh, but yeah, it's, it's uh, 
great to be here and uh, been enjoying the show and, and your breakdown, especially last week with you and uh, Jimmy from Escape the Force? Es- Explore the Force. Explore yes. the Force. <laughs> That's another show, Escape the Force. There we go. <laughs> There's so many Star Wars podcasts. And we're... Which the Coven didn't do. They didn't They didn't escape the Force at all, did they? Well, they, uh, the threat. Too soon? The threat, as they call it. Way too soon. All right. Spoiler alert, Greg. We haven't told the people yet. <laughs> I well, can spoil episode three, the one you, I was... you certainly can. That's right. right. That's right. I think all of us here, as you said, would have definitely put our money on it being mm-hmm. like a antonym, perhaps for destiny, which was last week's episode title. Uh, and then just out of nowhere, day. <laughs> day yes. like, all right. Well, nah, let's let's roll with it. But before we get into the conversation about day and, of course, spoiler conversation to everybody at home if you haven't watched the episode yet what are, what are you doing listening to us at this point go pause this podcast and watch it on your disney plus and then come right back to this moment in time so that you can watch it fresh and make decisions for yourself and challenge yourself perhaps so is what the acolyte presents and then uh, come hear our discussion as maybe we challenge ourselves or ponder the thoughts that are presented within the acolyte and mostly just have a good time having a great conversation about the acolyte or at least that's our plan for this but before we get into that plan, you know, Greg, for Light and Life, let's talk about the higher public a bit and your experiences with it. So, you know, have you been keeping up with the books, perhaps? Uh, did you maybe watch an episode or two of Young Jedi Adventures? How familiar were you with the higher public before diving into the Acolyte a few weeks ago with the first episode, which you saw in a theater, too, by the way? Yes. Pretty cool experience. Yeah. You did too, and it was so fun to hear that you had met Mary Perdue and yeah. Chaz for the first time, just like you know Jen and Colby over there on the West Coast, on you know Batu West. Um, but yeah, I'm talking around that because when I looked at the first question, I was like, <laughs> "This is going to go really fast," because and not not because I'm like, "I don't like the high." No, I I got Light of the Jedi like a lot of folks did, right? Mm-hmm. Because what yeah. uh, Project Luminous was uh, you know first announced in 2019, yeah, and then the book started coming out. And it was it Charles Soule who did Light yep. of the Jedi. Mm-hmm. And it was a lot. Like, I'm not a huge reader. I have lots of books. Nothing stops me from buying lots <laughs> of books, lots of comic books. What I don't have, and because I worked two jobs for a very long time, is I didn't have time to read. Mm. Um, and I would say, like, you know, I had, I finally finished Heir to the Empire last year. So that should really tell you how how far I'm get, I'm caught up. But I would say that it that Light of the Jedi was a bit of a struggle for me, only okay. because keeping track of all those folks. Now it starts sure, off in, sure. in, with a whirlwind, right? No spoilers for light of the Jedi, mm-hmm. but I would say it starts off with a whirlwind, but you know, and it, go, it moves, you know, like there's a lot that's going on and you're kind of going through, but I think just because of the volume of the books that came out, you know, the young adults, True. I think I'd read some of the uh, comic books. I think the high Republic, I think I had a couple of the early high Republic comic books. And I know that, you know, all the great work by, you know, Kevin Scott, Charles soul, Justin mm-hmm. Ireland, um, and I'm forgetting a, a couple of the other ones, um, but they, they've they done a bang up job. It's just there was just so much content out there that it started to kind of get a, like, all right, I'm not even like I thought maybe I'll just get the big books. And then, no, I couldn't even keep up with that. <laughs> um, but well, I, the only other thing I would say is that, you know, the the Nile didn't really hit me. I, I thought that mm-hmm. the big cataclysmic event would be kind of like more spacey and something more than, okay. than, than the Nile. And I would say I think they have probably come into their own. And I, from what I hear, people really dig it. And I'm like, yeah. that's cool. Because at first I was like, oh, pirates. OK. And then I was. But, you know, that's like I said, that's not, that's that's me. That's not necessarily anything wrong. It's just sort of like, huh, OK. But then I think what's also happened is a lot of the stories, and I like I like the concept of the Starlight Beacon, which mm-hmm. I, I don't think is complete yet in Light of the Jedi. I think it it finishes up or it's just about ready to be debuted, and then, of course, all the events that happened to it. So that right. I think I'm a little more interested in. I did listen to the – there was the audio book about – was it Battle of Jedi? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, it was like an audio drama, and it didn't really hit me. I thought so. That, that's really going to confuse you because that's in a whole different phase, and you know, yeah, it's kind of in the middle of two big books at the same time. 
it was it was an odd one and yeah i think i just i came into it because i really liked i liked jetta from rogue one and i really wanted to learn more and all i could about it now i i i'm also under the understanding i think there is a high republic comic series that also deals a lot with jetta and oh, i need yeah. to source that out someone needs to get me the 411 so i can find <laughs> it because there's a trade paperback or uh you know some some old back issues that i need to grab because that i'm interested in and when i hear people talk about especially i think what you guys were talking about last week where mm -hmm. You know, there's the concept of different force users, and now you start to make when they start talking about as the holy city, and you go, "Oh, yeah, that that I I kind of really dig, and I'd like to hear more about that." Um, I think that was kind of was what I was hoping with Battle of Jeddah, but it didn't really come from me. But... I fully echo. I don't know if I, I I understand right everything that you're saying here, right? Like you basically with the first launch of Lila Jedi, they also launched two other books at the same time, so. You know, you're already down three books within <laughs> two weeks of this initiative launching, basically. And then, like, it felt like three months later, there was another set of books. And they just kept going and going and going until even, you know, last week, they just launched another book in phase three. Um, so, like, and and I have the full series, basically, in cool. other, you know, uh, room here where we have it all listed out. And... Uh, it is daunting. I, I don't blame anybody for not wanting to like, or feeling overwhelmed by just like the whole initiative itself, right? It's, this is a huge journey, a huge initiative that they've done. And I, I'm, I'm grateful and lucky that I somehow found time in grad school to keep up with it amidst everything else that I was doing. Uh, I will say it doesn't, aside from Vernestra Rowe, there's nothing mm -hmm. introduced so far in those stories that really change how one would view the acolyte there's there's you know there's nothing groundbreaking in that it's its own separate thing it's it's doing these these side stories and adventures and and showcasing these characters that are they're developing there you're just getting more into the jedi more into where the republic is at at this time which are just some ancillary details i think could add to the experience of the acolyte but I'm not going to detract from it at all but i'm glad that you got through light of the jedi i think it's a really good book again i think that you're you're right in your uh, summation that the Nile aren't really fully flushed out yet at that point, they really, again, like you, you suggested, they, they become what they were meant to be. I would say by book three of the phase one. And then of course, phase two is even earlier. Uh, they go back another 150 <laughs> years to really confuse everything, which is why battle Jedi made absolutely no sense to you. Probably <laughs> you're nope. like, who are these people who are, what's going on here? This, this is blowing my mind here. I have no idea what's going on. Um, but I will say phase three has been nothing but bangers in terms of books. They've been, uh, really excellent. So, if, you know, for listeners at home, you know, if you want, it's open, join the club, join the higher public club. There's a lot of fun, fun stories there and you can forge your own path at this point. It's like a creature and adventure of higher public stuff. If you want, you can keep reading the adult books. Maybe you're a young adult reader. Maybe, uh, maybe you want, you know, just to sit with battle of Jedi forever and you just want to keep re-listening to it over and over again. No. No, no, no. <laughs> here's what I would say. I, um, the other thing is, is that, you know, like we got, you know, we had Star Wars books and I think more or less, you know, the old, the older legend stuff mm -hmm. that kind of tried to work together, I think. But what I, I like about the High Republic books is, you know, this was something that was thought out. There was a group of authors and yeah. I think they, they created something that is cohesive enough that you could go back to. And I think that. Sure. You know, it's sort of like if we had a chance to kind of like you know, go in a, to a clean slate, I like how they did it because eventually I think they can kind of catch up and connect the dots. And then people will kind of like folks like yourselves or, you know, like, you know the Greg Casses or Jens or sure. all those yep. folks who have who are well versed in it can kind of go back and go, yeah, pick this one up, pick this one up. Because when it's all kind of dropping at once, I think it's kind of hard to kind of know what should I be reading? Is this important? Is this, you know, and mm -hmm. it, it kind of reminds you of, you know, like any, give, any given DC or Marvel event where they, you know, there was the secret wars that had all this and then secret wars too, because we couldn't get enough. Let's just tie in every book and make someone buy everything that's hey, tied into it. Money, man. <laughs> which is fine if the books are a dollar a piece, but when you're having all the stuff that is connected, it can, you know, all these like big summer events can get really expensive. Exactly. But I think yep. it's something like, Hey, if you're trying to get through the timeline, get this, this, and this, or later on, we, we always kind of say like a lot of times, even the stuff that's comes after the Disney, like, Hey, you should read, you know, catalyst or think mm -hmm. of, you know, mm -hmm. aftermath, or you read this or that, or, you know, what I always like is knowing that, all right, someday when I get to the revenge of the Sith novelization, 
I know because I've heard enough people talk about it, that that is the bee's knees, as opposed to some of the other ones you go, meh, okay. You know, you know, you know, Alan Dean Foster's, you know, some of the stuff is like <laughs> not a whole lot of extra stuff there, but you know, so that's kind of nice where later on I, we can kind of go back when there's time. Like right now I'm trying to work on the Brian Daly books of the old mm -hmm, Han Solo mm -hmm. trilogy, which is going to impact some of what we're talking about. Tonight. We're, we're going to talk about that in a second here. But yeah, uh, in a second, a couple seconds. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, hey, it's never too late. Forty years, forty plus years later, it's never too late to kind of to grab one of those things. So the High Republic's going to be around with us for a long time. Yeah, uh, delighting, delighting thousands upon thousands of people. Absolutely, and it's exciting to see such power put behind a publishing initiative too. Yes, which is probably one of the first times that I've ever seen such an initiative put the entire weight of Lucasfilm behind it um, and, and to this rate. Which is awesome, and I'm glad that we're finally seeing it in a live action sense towards the end of the Higher Republic era with the Acolyte. And that brings us to the Acolyte itself. We're talking episode four today, day. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this episode brings us back to the present time within the show, of course. Are you surprised, Greg, that we did not see other perspectives from last week's episode of the Brendock situation first before coming back to the future? Yes, because it, you know, I think we have a tendency to kind of go, aha, I know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And here I'm going to lay out the whole thing. I'm guilty of it myself going, I know exactly how the rest of this show is going to go. Yeah. And I think for a time, we let ourselves to believe that, oh, okay, so this is how it is. They got through what we thought the initial mystery was. And now it's going to be like, we're going to be relieving the events from different perspectives and then it's sort of at the end. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, no. And you're like, okay, on the one hand, I don't mind that because, you know, I, I think if you can kind of keep throwing me off a bit, I keep, I keep engaged because I'm like, Oh, I thought it was going to, okay. Sure, Which sure. some of the events of, 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 of day uh, clearly pointed out, but you know, it's, it's interesting to think about that with the events that happened in day, because then you go, well, okay. Based on what happened to that character, will that going back still matter as much? Mm -hmm. So it's really, you know, it, you know, it's um, I think, Dan's there. I was listening to Coffee with Kenobi. And he was talking mm -hmm. to, to James from Jedi News about how it's challenging and sure. not necessarily challenging. And like, I don't get it. It's like, I like when I'm not, when I don't feel like it's on a rail and I feel like, oh, I don't, you know, like I'm already enjoying it because it's new Star Wars. But now you're like, okay, now you've got me and going in different directions. And now when I go back, even watching it the second time, I'm paying attention to this person or that person. And I'm, oh, okay, I'm starting to pick up the vibe. And, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. here's one thing, you know, like when we're watching it on our mobile phones and you're like, I'm not, you know, am I catching really what they're saying? I'm like sure. somewhere a cinematographer is crying because I'm watching it on <laughs> a screen. When, if I just go home and watch it on, you know, any one of the number of enormous, my, my mom come, my mom who's moved in, she's like, all these TVs are so big. I'm like, yeah. And I, none of them are doing anything usually most of the time. Like, what do you mean? They bad. could be bigger, mom. <laughs> <laughs> I know I could ha I could go nuts, but I mean, that's the thing. It's like, you know, now that we have this appointment viewing again, like we did with Ahsoka, it's great oh, because goodness. you have the opportunity to watch it on a big screen and see all that detail and see how big that bug oh. was that you go, don't touch stuff. All right. Here's, here's forest. Yeah. Here's, here's forest rule. Number one in space. Don't touch crap. Okay. Because it could come to life and kill you. Yeah. Lesson learned real fast. And, and I think for a lot of the viewers at home, we were like, yeah, just let it go. Don't disturb yes. it. Just, yeah. just leave it alone. No need to touch it. No need to touch anything. Don't touch anything. Nope. What? What? Is that what Han says uh, in one of the movies? He's like, so any of it. Don't touch any of it. Any of it. <laughs> Wait, Chewie, you always thinking with your stomach. That's <sighs> right. That's right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is a. I, I, I will say for myself, I was a bit surprised because I thought we would. I'm, I'm worried that if like this episode where it ends, especially if then we do back in time for next week's episode, you know, there's a, there's a chance perhaps that next week's episode will be back on Brendoc, right? And then to go back, like if they do this flip flopping back and forth for an audience, that might feel a little jarring in a way. Um, what, what do you think about, about that? If it potentially goes back in time next week, or do you think that it'll stay in this current, era for at least the next episode it's a tough up you know there is there is a timeline and I, I know james even brought it up when he was talking to dan about if they had run with episode three first and mm -hmm. even i had kind of was like what would happen is you know it, like i said the 
it's interesting how they structure this. Uh, I could get off on a small rant. My, my biggest rant about any of these really has been the run times. I think mm-hmm. I don't know who's making the call as far as like how short these or long these shows can get. But I do think that some of it suffers because of the run times. I think okay. especially yeah. if you compare it to the contemporaries that are out there and you know, like, like, you know, apples and oranges, if you want to talk game of Thrones, you know, you know, like, mm-hmm. um, House of the Dragon, or I was just recently binged Fallout, which had really very meaty episodes, and I had very little idea of what's going on there. Yeah, but yeah. I think when you compare them to other, uh, you know, other, you know, property shows out there, they're not shy about going longer. And I do think mm-hmm. that when you have stuff like this, and they are moving this series along, you, you're, you're getting these beats They're they're wanting to get us to somewhere. Yeah. And I'm willing to take that ride and, and love it. But I'm like, boy, would an extra six to eight minutes kill somebody? Is it hurting that the bottom line bad enough that a couple of extra scenes mm. could have really either, you know, either helped the point. I'm not a story writer, right? You know, but I just feel like I want as much Star Wars as I can get. And I think if you make longer stories, I, I think in some cases you give yourself the benefit. Just ask Game of Thrones last season. Uh, you know, HBO was willing to give those <laughs> yeah. guys. Do you want? And they're like, no, we can finish up this. We can finish up this series, and it'll be just fine. And we all know how that worked out. When you said, you know what, Greg, you're One opening up episodes. a wound here. <laughs> I'm telling you. And I was invested from like after I got in on season two of that, and I was so down. And you're just like, oh, okay. But I'm like, you know. So I, I think that I, I've said, you know, like they're still trying to figure out. You, you can really see a process of them trying to figure out. Mm-hmm how to make a good show and you know what what Mm. what is a really a magic length and i don't know if they've got it yet or you know like i said we don't know all the ins and outs of what they're allowed to do what they're not allowed to do and so i'll give them the benefit of the doubt and i'm like i said the story is what it is and i i'm enjoying it but man i could just i could you a couple more minutes would it just kill you Mm-hmm. It's like when you go back and look at the deleted scenes, like really would, would 30 you seconds of really, that in there. Yeah. You're just throwing that in there. That's fine. Um, but anyway, so that, that's, that's sort of my rant on that. But I would say it, it, I love, I love the series, but it is like interesting. Like, will we go back to another flashback? Mm-hmm. I would like to know more. And I think that especially with Saul's thing, like I'll explain everything. And that usually, oh like, okay, either Saul's going to die or, you know, we're going to go back and we are going to get some of that. And, and maybe Saul has some splaining to do. Um, but, you know, there's there's more that happened there for, for sure. And you guys covered it uh, really greatly, like I said, on, on, on your previous episode, Jimmy. You guys did a really great job on that. So I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. I would like to go back. And it, it probably, you know, if I was going to put a bet, I'd say it probably makes sense because you're at a point where you have a, this, we're mm-hmm. expecting a battle. And now it's like, oh, okay. And you've already upset. You've already upset your 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 part of the audience anyway. It doesn't matter. The no, rest of us who are here enjoying it goes do what you want. I'm I'm I. This yeah, is we're here for the ride. <laughs> Tuesday night. I'm here. Okay, you can do what you want for the next four weeks. I don't care. Yeah, I'll tell you. As one of the the I wouldn't say the leading member, but as one of the members that have really enjoyed Soul, the Soul Patrol, uh, as we've as we've dubbed ourselves, um, that line where he was like. Yeah, I'll tell you more later. We'll both heal ourselves, right? I was like, what do you need healing for? What did you do? You didn't mention this oh, before. Oh. You're ripping my heart out, boss. Just like how Greg is ripping my heart out again by bringing up the last season of the Game of Thrones. <laughs> Wasn't that your darn Padawan? Could you have mentioned this any point when I was your Padawan? No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Go, go. Soul, come on, master. <laughs> we we both had trauma to work through, man. <laughs> help me help you. Oh, my gosh. My gosh, indeed. Yeah, I will say, I think it's, I will be, I'm actually at this point, I'm hoping that it goes back in time just because I, I want to know more before they kill off more people, what actually happened, right? But I wonder, are they going to drag that out to like, make us as fans just keep like, you know, just get seething at the point where we're like, we, we must have it to the point where we're almost rioting to give us the episode now, you cowards. And then they'll give it to us and then we'll finally learn what happened. But I think that there's perhaps two episodes that they could do of that Brendock situation, right? I think you could do May's perspective and perhaps the Jedi perspective too. There's a lot more that happened uh, in that whole ending sequence there that is not what we're 
told in episodes one and two exactly. There wasn't necessarily the fire that killed everybody, as we saw from the the wreckage of of the witch coven. But uh, I, I'm hopeful. I'm I I just want to know. I want to know. I want that band aid ripped off. If something bad happened, tell me now. I I don't want to be praising Soul as this wonderful character and then. You know, the, only to find out that he's the worst of all of them. <laughs> Don't worry, you still have you still have Basil. Basil That's is right. Basil. Team That's Basil. Right. So Team Basil. We'll we'll get to Basil in a, in a second here. Yeah. But uh, let's get to the small council now. That was called at the end of the second episode uh, by Vernestra Rowe, and it takes place in this episode now that we're back in the present time. So they determine that the matter with May and her master should be dealt with internally, and the fear is that you know news about these events would lead to more mistrust for the jedi across the galaxy but greg are the jedi though acting out of fear themselves here what do you think i think there is something definitely going on and and how the council at this point how many people were in that room that was you know, a big was room saying, that wasn't just a small council that was a, a team meeting <laughs> I think the I think this whole episode proves that the Jedi Temple has a population problem because there were Jedi <laughs> crawling all over this joint, and you're going to tell me that something that that one of those one of those Jedi in that room who maybe is a little more looser on the lips, how is it not getting back to the Council? Mm, and I'm mm-hmm. like, there's no way. And so yeah, you're going. This is it's probably one of those things where it's like they should have gone to the Council immediately. I think they should um, have. Yeah. But Vernestra is definitely worried about something. But then it's like, the longer this goes, the more harm it does Vernestra, because then it's like, oh, hey, if this keeps blowing up, by the way, you knew about this and didn't tell us. Mm -hmm. Uh, Much like, oh, by the way, Saul, you didn't mention that she had a sister? Um, That everybody's Mm -hmm. like, so yeah. Saul's, why do I have a feeling Saul's going to very much break our hearts? I'm Um, feeling it every, you know, it's... I'm really... (laughs) But, uh, you know, but, that you know, like I said, um, it, it's interesting that, you know, like some of the characters haven't hit with people, but I would say that I think, you know, it, it's just one of those where I, I found that like these characters, I've been really endeared by them, like almost from the get go. And I think some of that's because we've had to move the story along. But I mean, you know, everyone from, from yeah. Jackie to um, to May to Osha, these characters are really, really awesome. And you know, that's what I'm saying. Like, I want to see more of them and more of these interactions because we are picking things up. And in this case, it was a little, it, it, it was felt a little stilted because then you're like, later on you find out. And by the way, there was no easy way to find out that was Kayati Mundi. You know, you had to, I, I had to, I had to, I had to switch over to my laptop and the font was like two, right? Size two. And they're like, oh, oh yes. way, there's all these people going to this. You're and like, of course hey, they like make the episode smaller. Uh, and they're like, have you watched the Empire Strikes Back yet? <laughs> I'm like, you know, it it's almost like trying to do an Excel formula to try to keep those credits up. So I can at least it pause is. and yeah. see, let alone, I have to take a shot with my phone because no thing will let, nothing will let me do a screenshot. So I could just remember who the heck played what. And I'm like, you know, so I'm like, yes, you know, I I'm, I'm interested to know who the key grip was, but I'd really like to know who the cast was. And so, yeah, it's just every time now I become an expert on like, okay, <laughs> pause you, you hit it and then you have to get that little thing again otherwise you get back out to menu and you're just like you know let alone in any one of these apps and by the way all the apps really kind of suck it, it, you know like they're they're all struggling. they're all horrible and oh you gosh. know I, the happiest moment was when i found out on my apple tv that i could turn off the sound for some of these preview in, within the apps you mm-hmm. can turn off like the sound for the previews because i'm like i just want to know what's on netflix and now it's like it's just oh my gosh audio and i'm like are you kidding me i don't like I don't mind seeing a preview. Now, why do I sound like I'm the old man on this show? Uh, I'm like, darn it, I just want to watch. Like in my day, you're a good had... company here because I was r- ranting about this the other day. <sighs> like, know. why does it need to be at a thousand? Like, all the apps are at different volumes too. Let me just say, like, what's the mm-hmm. deal with that? Why can't we just have a uniform structure across the board? Like Netflix should all all of them. One one app needs to be at a hundred on my on my uh, remote for volume, and then the others need to be at like twenty, and then Prime needs to be at like thirty five to be at a good sounding volume. Like what what? Yeah, you let me know when the Force Ghost episode on streaming services comes out, and I will be there with rants <laughs> in my pocket, ready to bring out. Uh, and this is a guy who sold Apple TVs for a very long time, <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. Um, at any rate, but what were we? Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know. 
Um, the the one thing I would say is that I think at the end of that scene, I think Saul and like I said, breaking your heart, Saul. It's happening. Um, yeah, it's gonna happen. I thought you know, like I liked his scene with Vanessa at the end, and I thought that was you know like yes, that it's one of those where I'm like I think some of the scenes that really shine. You know, there are these moments where it really you're like, OK, uh, we're getting some things here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm. Coyote needs a little work. <laughs> well, I'll tell you before we get to the Coyote Mooney of it all. I am so intrigued about like, who are the enemies of the Jedi at this point? Like, who is Vernestra worried about? She mentioned in the first two episodes or, or one of the first two episodes that like, if news gets out about this, our enemies will number or will we'll double mm -hmm. or something like that. You know, it's something to that degree. I'm just like, who are the who are the bad guys that they're worried about here? Is who our political adversaries will number? She also says, and like, oh no, they're already getting into the politics of it all. The, they're already getting worried about about the dealings with the Senate and and the, the, the their inner workings with that system is already starting. The, the problems that you're going to see in the Phantom Menace are already coming to the surface right now, and. I, I, I want them to actually like say like, all right, it's it's those numbskulls in the Trade Federation that are really driving us up a, <laughs> up a wall audience. here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> these these guys are a thorn in our side already. All they do is, you know, they, they, they spread Jedi hate in that Senate building or maybe it's the E.T. species, right? They're they're the ones out there going like down with the Jedi. Who knows? Um, I, I'm just curious, like at this point in the galactic senate and the era of the republic who are the people that they're the most worried about like who are the political adversaries that are going against the peacekeepers of the republic it, it doesn't make too much sense to me that they would have that many adversaries at this point but perhaps there's something else to be, yeah there's something else out there <laughs> considering how many jedi are crawling around that temple looking for <laughs> what are they doing i mean what like, do they do that's right <laughs> you know and and what what causes what causes the olega folks to get nearly what what causes the man to near near to my dear to my heart olega padawan how's he get banished out to olega <laughs> and these clowns are just kind of running around hanging out in the hallways i you know like shouldn't you be training somebody or shouldn't you be keeping some peace maybe you'd have fewer political adversaries if you had more jedi out there going man real be real shame if something happened to your planet right um yeah, we can yeah. make this whole planet go and nobody would know um, maybe they should make it harder to be a Jedi, right? Is that is that the way to reduce the ranks? Like make it more bar difficult. Is really low, yeah. Maybe yeah, maybe it's too low. Like they're they're letting in Osha. She was eight at the time. So maybe they're like, we gotta set some more stricter restrictions here. Two years or less. Two years old or less, guys. <laughs> a Lega Padawan. <laughs> Lega Padawan. That's the name. Literally, you have a Lega Master and a Lega Padawan, and you're going, man. You had one job. They, they had, had one, one job. job. Watch the guy that had a force field around them and make sure that he doesn't nope. do anything. <sighs> Speaking of people in credits, though, within this episode, we see some pretty big prequel cameos. And, and we've already alluded to one of them, uh, Kayati Mundi, and uh, what appears to be a young Plo Koon who goes off on this mission there to find Kelnaka. What do you think about what do you think their inclusion does for the story of the Acolyte and perhaps Star Wars overall? I know it's caused a lot of debate on the internet for some reason about birth dates oh, that were in you, legends oh you <laughs> saw that right uh, you know it hasn't I, been I, i've been hip feed. to the to the internet these days <laughs> oh my god it hasn't been you know it's like uh what isn't in my feed every day when i go on and you know, pick a pick a feed it, no, i'm not gonna just blame twitter and it's like it's in my instagram th feed you know i guess if Everywhere. i spent more time in threads <laughs> i'd probably see it there too along and facebook and all that get back on hive i gotta see what they're up to that can't be can't be that Nothing's bad over happening there. on hive i tell you <laughs> it's, i post in there and i'm like whew, 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 whew. it's like whispers it's yeah yeah you see the um, the tumbleweed crawl across the, the the hive's problem was that it went down after it got super popular for two weeks for two weeks and then everyone went away again i'm like come on guys they're back they're back up and strong and then no one came back anywho and then you sorry have to cut you off on which, you. <laughs> and you have mastered on which you can't get on there on the one social one you'd want to be on i do do i do cross post on blue sky but then again a lot of these take you know i i think twitter and instagram still take up a lot of the air in the room mm -hmm. and yeah a lot of folks have been like hey isn't his birthday and i'm like Hey, did that come from a Legends book? Yeah, has that never I hate been canon? I to break it to you, but I got books on my shelf that they've Sherlocked. By the way, and I use the term Sherlock, this is a term uh, in, in the other circles I used to be in in tech. When mm -hmm. Apple would take a third-party program 
and Ooh. just wrap it into the OS. And there used to be a used to be a search program back in the '90s called Watson. I remember this. Yes. And then Apple, I think, came out with Sherlock. And so Sherlocked is a term when Apple takes a you know like a piece like a program or a, a part of the the OS or something that someone else used to do as a third party and they just bring it in and make it theirs. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, if you're wondering the, uh, I got, I got books that say, Oh yeah, by the way, Ahsoka did this. Well, I hate to break it to you, but Ahsoka really did this. And it's one of those where I'm like, if you're out there going like, I didn't really care that much about Kai in, in the prequels. And so I didn't really bat. Not that I don't like the man. I don't have a grudge. I don't go out wake up every day going yeah, you're not like cursing kaidi mundi as you wake up <laughs> right him or plo Koon. and i you know I, I like that these characters have gotten you know extra like all through the clone wars and things like that we've learned more about these characters mm -hmm. and you might as well because you know if you got vernestra Rowe as sort of one of the few high republic characters it makes sense to kind of interweave these together where you've got prequel maybe some prequel characters who are still around and some high republic because it beats having to recreate new people all the time when you've yes. got all this richness, which is why I like, Hey, when I see that maybe they've picked up a character or this from a legend, I'm like, you've got a lot of stuff out there. A lot of it was really great. And a lot of people really like it. And I like the Easter eggs and really yeah. it was a couple of lines, you know, okay. I don't think they got, I don't know if they got the, the same actor or not. Uh, uh, they didn't No, They got okay. a different person. So it's just one of those where it's like, it makes sense. And, you know, like I said, if it was in a book, if it was in a post Disney book, someone, someone from the story group would have said that they're not, they're not, how dare you this stuff yeah. go by, but if it's from a legends book, yeah. so I'm not, I'm like, I'm not, you know, it's just, it's just the thing that you got that, Hey, I can use this to repost and bleh, so whatever. Yes. Yeah, so let me, what, what can I weaponize this week? And also leave it to quote unquote star wars fans to suck the fun out of something fun in star wars <laughs> hey, you didn't you didn't have to make the meme yourself so what you know, like what are you complaining about it was already pre-made all you had to do is take a screenshot and thus make it worse you know worse to look at and then you just send it around so someone did all, already did the work for it someone already did the hate that's for right. you that's right what do you got to complain why are you about? adding to it why are you adding to it <laughs> i'll tell you i had a fun time with that cameo it's like holy cow it's coyote mundi <laughs> i think i was that was my exact reaction <laughs> in this whole sequence <laughs> as i'm trying to sit there and discern what is happening in this team meeting that is overly too many people Thank in you. this meeting like i think uh all of us that have sat in a meeting where we've been on perhaps in person or on a zoom call we're like why do we need 30 people on this call for something that should be technically a small council um something very discreet quick to the point you need about four or five people in there with high level status that can determine what to do and determine next steps from there because really only three or four people talked in that meeting. <laughs> and then and the they rest went their separate ways. And the rest and were just, just like hanging around. <laughs> did we say, you know, like, I don't know. It's one of those, like I said, you know, we can't keep, you know, plot points, you know, like stuff from get spoilers getting out. I'm like, yeah, who, who's on the Jedi Council who is that far aloof mm -hmm. that they don't have they don't have their little uh, little birds uh, like in Game of Thrones. Well, yes, like yeah. that. Um, Everybody's got spies, and I'm sure the Jedi do too. And I'm sure I'm sure the Council knows. I like to think that Kaiyadi Moon is a spy for Yoda on the Council. He's like, mm -hmm, yes, Kai how do you think he got on the Council? There that, you go. That's right. He climbed the Game of Thrones to get to the Council. <laughs> <laughs> Chaos is a ladder. Coyote Moon, he was he's running, his he's running a brothel on Coruscant for sure. Now I'm interested in Coyote <laughs> Monday. All right, let's let's start making our own. Like, hey, where's the fanfic of like, yes, he's just working his way up, waiting for those council members to go. Oh, Vanessa, I'm really sorry you went. Yeah, out. It'd be a real shame if something happened to that title you had. It sure would. It they sure can't would. trust you, but they can trust me. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Like mm -hmm. you, you worry about our political adversaries. I'll, I'll handle this. <laughs> this will all be swept under the rug. No worries, no worries, See, Vernestra. You, you know, let me just say too, nothing that happens in the sequence, the inclusion of Coyote Mundi, takes away anything that happens in the prequels. Yeah. Right? He, no one in that meeting, of the many people in that meeting, are like, huh? It's a Sith Lord. <laughs> <laughs> seems like she was trained by a sith lord this assassin here they're like oh it looks like she was perhaps trained by a jedi maybe or a splinter cell right that's exactly what they say or a splinter order or something like that right no one even and is they like drop it <laughs> yeah no one no one's like quite thinking about the, the sith at all so you know there's no canon breaking that he's like the sith have been extinct for a millennia 
right? Well, aside from that instance about a hundred years ago where I was, <laughs> remember that girl May that was killing Jedi? Like, no, there's nothing like that. So all these unfounded things are just reasons for people to spew hate. They're latching onto something that's not there. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, just enjoy a fun cameo. It's a fun cameo. It's probably not. He's probably not going to appear again. He's, I don't. you know, <laughs> there's no, there's no need for him to appear again. And if he does, then cool. Coyote Moon, you're going to see him in uh, the Phantom Menace. You're going to see him a lot in Clone Wars, and you're going to see him die on My Guido. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And here's what I'm also going to say is an interesting. Here's the one thing that I think his inclusion means something here, right? He's okay. a part of this meeting where they're like, we got to go save Kelnaka, right? Maybe, you know, his famous line that is memed from Revenge of the Sith, well, what about the Wookiees? <laughs> what about the, the droid attack on the Wookiees, right? You know, he's concerned about Wookiees. And perhaps his old buddy, Kelnaka, a, a Wookiee Jedi, like this, and he, we know Kelnaka's fate that happens later in this episode. He is taken out by, I presume, the Sith Lord or some dark side user. Uh, Dr. That's Teeth. Not a, that's not a paper cut, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Teeth in helmet form. Um, uh, perhaps that, that loss is something he's like, I, we got to protect our Wookiees. We got to protect them. We got to worry about this. And then as soon as they see, sees them in danger, he's thinking about his old buddy, Kalanaka, a hundred years before. That makes more sense to me than, uh, than him being like, oh, it looks like a Sith Lord. We better worry about this, which doesn't happen. I'm putting words in his mouth. None of that conversation happens. So, <laughs> Ah, and Plo Koon, too. Like, that must. Do you think Dave Filoni, had, with his new role at Lucasfilm, was like, we could use some Plo Koon in this scene, guys? <laughs> he could be on this mission here. It's a, just throw him in there. The I title, have the mask at home, actually. This is my mask that I created. <laughs> if you got the title, use it, man. And like I said, nothing is escaping, you know, nothing is escaping his, his, you know, his eyes at this point he knows what's going on and he was put in a position to to look at this stuff now maybe you could say you know argue that some of this was in production before but but i'm like no no none of, none of this would have been released if there were some of the stuff yep, you know exactly. later and you know maybe in the gallery or later on we'll get an interview where they might discuss it a little later but i'm like I, i'm not yeah i'm not losing sleep over their inclusion <laughs> it makes sense like I said, there's there seems to be a lot of Jedi in this temple, and if you're going to get hung up hung hung up on the fact that seemingly a lot of people seem to be on their 15 all the time, yeah. and I'm like, whoa, 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 we need to, you know, like what what's going on there? Somebody need to feed the Jedi furnaces, or right, you know, is is somebody you know like <laughs> Jocasta knew who maybe she's been there the whole time? Oh, she's maybe probably 400 years old. I bet she's got to be 400. You know, <laughs> those, those holocrons aren't gonna aren't gonna clean themselves, folks. So you know, unless you want to be unless you want to be out there on Olega. Uh, with all the other uh, sharp tacks, you better get to work. Oh, it all comes back to Olega. I hope that the climax of the series is on Olega so that we can see Padawan, Olega Padawan, come back into the fray again and make his heroic, triumphant, um, you know, save save the Jedi, right? He's going to do it. I believe that, in that. That post on Instagram I had had a lot of traction, by the way, and maybe one detractor who I didn't hide the comment yet. But I'm like, I, I tagged the actor, <laughs> too. And I was like, by the way, yeah, and then some, and some clown decides to, like, make a really, like, lousy comment. Oh, I'm like, okay, whatever. But I'm like, no, I'm honestly, you know, this is You're a like, kid. Anytime you want to talk, Rebel Base Card, I got I got a place for you. <laughs> I literally had a website in the late 90s called the Husky Rebel Home Base. And that's oh. because, by the way, I used to have to wear Husky jeans. Uh, you know, so all I'm going to say is, I want, I want Jedi looking like me, man. Hey, if, if you're going to be, if you're going to, if you're gonna, uh, not going to be hanging around in the temple with all the other pencil pushers there, you're going to be out there on the outskirts. You know, you're going to be trying to keep the cop <laughs> here from breaking down. You're the one that's like, Hey, somebody's got to be doing pencil, this. Man. That's right. <laughs> if th those paper towels don't replace themselves, man. So I'm like, Hey, you know, someone's got to be putting toner in the fax machine. Like, I'm telling you, these yeah. are the important details that need to be taken care of. Someone Sweet. needs to make sure that we have FedEx pa pouches for, delivery and just making sure just anybody at random doesn't get through the door yeah yeah he's the uh v, the vp of good vibes for the olega but you know he was sleeping on the job for his uh his important task <laughs> but i digress right he was he was the sir Kristen cole and not some some different way of of not uh, attending to his duties and when he was most needed for his duties <laughs> for uh, the house of the dragon references continue here um anywho like I said, just because something's in a Legends book 
or a source material book from you know 2004 doesn't mean it's canon now so yeah, it let it go it's fair game to be sherlock so it is absolutely it. fair game this is your first time enjoy it because yeah there's going to be more and even if you know even if there was something it doesn't take away. released afterwards it's not going to take precedent over the needs of the story right like for example the ahsoka novel written by ek johnston has different interpretation of the events of the siege of mandalore mm-hmm. than what we see in season seven of clone wars with that arc which I'm not going to take away Dave Filoni's right to properly tell the story he wanted to for that series, just because it was written on a book in a different way a couple of years earlier. Like both can be true, you know. Um, like I always say with with Star Wars, it's so who's the narrator? Sometimes it's an unreliable narrator, right? Some some events happen, but to the event that they do happen to that degree, perhaps they don't actually happen the way we intend them to right I, i've seen many you know the famous han and greedo scene i've seen many versions of that scene depicted <laughs> over the years where perhaps they shoot at the same time now if you watch the latest version on disney plus i've also seen instances where greedo shoots first i've seen instances where han shoots first i've seen books where they depict that greedo and han shoot first what ultimately happens is that greedo dies <laughs> Doesn't matter who shoots first. I don't know. At this point, I don't care. <laughs> the Greedo dies. Han walks away. That's the that's what matters. That's the big the big plot point at the end of all things. Um, so as we go into future Star Wars stories that continue to challenge us, like I hope the Acolyte continues to do, just remember that. Let let yourself be challenged and don't uh, don't let a random fact that someone probably just put on page when they're like, oh, I need to put in a birth date for him. <laughs> Uh, he was born at 94 BBY. I guess that'll work. Yeah, uh, if Coyote Monday was pushing you over the edge, you were, you know, you were, you were, rated, you were already you were not in a good place. Yeah, yeah, you were you... not in a good place to be in with. Come <laughs> on back um, at any rate. But you know, what's a good place to be in at this point is, uh, you know, we, we've been dodging the most important question at this point, Greg. You have. I've been, I've been waiting. I've been I, waiting I, patiently. And we, we talked offline about this. You've already done some homework into this matter, or at least you're going to do some homework in this matter. You're our key correspondent on this. But <laughs> before we get into that conversation itself, are you on Team Basil? Oh, hell yes. Hell yeah. I am, I hell am yeah. Team Basil all the way. And I like the fact that apparently his language is much more nuanced. It's uh, harder so than Sherry sure, right. Wook, yeah. Yeah, it, you know, it's one thing to take the uh, to take the language class. I guess it's another thing. Could you have taken like the the social studies class to know maybe that he's not as interested in in keeping up with you as not. Although it's interesting, like basic based on his movement, I'm like, how the hell did they lose him? He wasn't I, going <laughs> that fast, and they were going at a full clip. I'm like, you know, they had too many Jedi for this endeavor. Right. Another case of too many people in one room, too many chefs in the kitchen, and not one of them did their job. Hey, I'll tell by you the way. I want you to keep an eye on the little guy who shouldn't be going as any faster than we are. Yeah. All your job one is... of the ten people that are here, or nine people on this fellowship journey, <laughs> need to be gonna... looking at this guy. <laughs> what are you looking at? You're over there touching trees and stuff. I'm like, hey, hey, somebody keep an eye on the beaver. Keep the eye on the prize. On the yeah. space beaver. Uh, so that he doesn't get too far ahead of us. Because what do we do? Our job is following him to Kaunaka. In this right. dangerous jungle where he was not wanting to be found to begin with. No. Like, you know, the quickest path to Olega is goofing <laughs> off on your on your away mission. Just because none of y'all are dressed in red cloaks doesn't mean that you're not expendable. And if you're not going to keep up with the space beaver, come on, kids. Uh, Maybe that's the best kept secret. They actually want to be uh placed on olega maybe olega padawan is like maybe that's a (laughs) yeah they've got those old travel posters where it's like olega see see this you know grandeur that isn't you know basically a a fedex kinkos in kansas you know it's the army base that no one wants to be stationed at but yet everyone wants to be stationed there right once you get there it's the best kept secret in town they got hot food they got you know spice cream perhaps everything that you need and low action ice cream maker there we yeah, go. Yeah, exactly. They got everything they need there. They got a Buffalo Wild Wings down the street. <laughs> they're shooting. The, they're shooting the interior rooms with a fisheye lens from a corner, so it looks bigger than what it is. Like, man, that council chamber is is amazingly big. Look at that. How many chairs they got in there? They get a, oh, exactly. It's 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 like driving through Indiana. <laughs> it's like driving through Indiana. 
No, oh, now Ross, geez. I'm going to get a call from Ross on that. You I sure are. You sure are. You're going to hear from Ross. His apologies to the great state of Indiana. So, I have so, nothing against it. They're just always in my way of where I need to go. So you're on Team Basil. We are also know. on Force Ghost Conversations are on Team Basil. Were you on Team Basil before the episode, though? I know the uh, picture was circulating around the social medias. Were you like, this little beaver is awesome? I I like that because I think that's, you know, when you see social do something other than just pound my feet with hate somebody taking <laughs> like, the ball show and me running a beaver. with this <laughs> show me show a star me. wars beaver and let's just well how can we combat hate with a star wars beaver and i want to <laughs> say yeah it started you know like that day that tuesday all of a sudden you start seeing you know like i can't say it, it might have been in the blast points feed um i, I don't want to like discredit them if they didn't but i'm like it's just one of those where it was kind of fun and you're like, okay, this, this is, this is what it should be where you take a character going, you know, we don't know what this character is, but we love it already. And just let's just, it. let's get yeah. behind it, which is fun. And I think that's when you're going from week to week, right. And you're allowing, you're allowing the, the series to kind of, you know, take a breath. This is what it should be fun. It's like, like, you know, like me going off on a leg of Padawan, which I, like I said, it's just one of those where we're getting a lot of extra characters and they're not like, overwhelming us with this like you know when we talked about the beginning of light of the jedi where it's like hey i've got to like try to remember all these because they're all gonna be important it's mm -hmm. a little easier when they're on the screen it's like okay that room full of jedi on their 15 okay i guess one or two <laughs> actually spoke i you know like later on i can find but i'm like no this was it was an interesting way i was it was unexpected how he was going to be used mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and it was it was just fun and like okay you know like and i always think of basil thinking of you know, Basil from Foldy Towers, right? That's, oh, you know, for okay. me, I keep hearing, I keep hearing, um, you know. Whereas Basil. I went, I went Basil Exposition from uh, Austin Powers. <laughs> Twins, Basil. Yeah, you're right. That's right. I, that's one of, my, one of my favorite quotes. Twins, Basil. Um, but yeah, no, it, it was, it was fun. And then later on, um, hearing that, that, once again, I'm getting my information off the internet, but I'm, I put my money down. Mm -hmm. Apparently this was a creature that was introduced by Brian Daly and Han Solo's revenge, yeah. according to the internet. But I, I have since bought the book. It's on its way. I bought it today actually. Cause I'm like, you know what? Um, I've been wanting to buy, I have, I wanted to buy the original paperbacks for that Han Solo adventures trilogy. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I was going to buy these anyway. They don't yeah, take a force your room. hand to move it up the timeline. Hands, for that. I'm like, yeah, I've got a so you know Han Solo's Revenge is the second book, and then I want to say is the De Destiny. Now I'm going to say Dial of Destiny, but I was looking earlier. Do, 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 do. And the Lost Legacy is Lost the third Legacy, book. Yeah, yeah. And they are great covers. And Brian Daly, of course, who did uh, amongst other things the radio dramas uh, for the mm -hmm. first two and helped on on the third one. Um, so nice to see if this indeed is in fact the case, like the corporate sector being introduced in. Han Solo it stars in. If Basil is introduced in Han Solo's Revenge, I will just smile. I'm like, this is nice because you go back to a lot of those older books and someone who's old like me goes, oh, that's cool. Now I have a kind of a reason to go back and kind of reintroduce myself to that. You know, I, like I said, when you go back and mm -hmm. I had Splinter of the Mind's Eye on my shelf for years and didn't yeah. read it, but you start to go like that has that book has kind of a meaning because that could have been a sequel had Star Wars gone south and you go, OK, it kind of introduces kind of like a kyber crystal. Yeah. kind of a thing so it's fun to kind of see the forensics especially at a time when there wasn't a lot of besides the comics a lot of other star wars stories and so mm -hmm. if they're doing a deep dive for this just like with the mandalorian and the holiday special getting the mandalorian rifle that's just <laughs> these are fun things to, to find out and you know having people going i want to be on team i'm like that just makes this that much more fun yeah. and what what we should be spending all our time on instead of like defending the whole reason that we're like i just want to watch the show is that okay exactly i mean like it's in the spirit of fun as you said like this is one of those wacky out of the box ideas that are just like yeah it can fit in star wars why not and it just reminds us again that it's a a fun space fantasy opera series at the end of the day where all this stuff to begin with is bonkers already so why not add a a, a wonderful a wonderful tracker space beaver that is used by the Jedi that has the weirdest language, the hardest language possible to learn, even harder than Shuri Wook, right? Just add more to the lore of this wonderful guy, Basil, right? Is he the one that, that you know, I've, I've already heard the theories go dark on it, right? You know, as soon as like <laughs> um, people have been like, uh, 
you know, Darth Jar Jar, right? Uh, you know, people run wild with that and the theories behind that. I'm like, and people have already been like, is Basil the actual uh, dark, you know, the Sith Lord, perhaps? Is he the dark side user? He's definitely Maybe. a Sith early warning system because that little that little thing lost his damn mind when May came into play and you're like screaming left and right. So that's right. Everybody's so far away except noises carry on. Uh, was it Kofor? Is that the planet yes. name? Yep. Yep. <laughs> Wild stuff. I hope we get more Basil. I hope we get more of him. Maybe he comes back next week and uh, no. Well, maybe we don't. He doesn't come back next week. Who knows? <laughs> um, so speaking of weird and, and, and interesting characters that are introduced in this show, what's the deal with, with uh, Kymir? 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 What? I don't even know how to pronounce his name, perhaps. Um, is there more to this character than what you know is presented on his screen? Is there more than meets the eye with this guy? Are you following the theories that have come across this guy? Or is he exactly as he's presented here? No, I think my spider sense keeps telling me that there's something up. And I do like the prevailing theories that he is. He's the guy. He's Darth Zippy, I think, as uh, Thank the Maker was calling him (laughs) um, with great podcast, by the way. But um, I think he's definitely the guy in the in the Zippy helmet. You're going with whether he's the master or the apprentice. I like I like I'd like to think that it makes sense that there is an apprentice, that he's an apprentice working with an acolyte working maybe trying to get something on the slide because he's definitely yeah. been guiding and making believe that he's this goofy guy he's just helping you along the way but the whole time this episode he was much like goading or goading may along goading may along yeah. no no you got to finish this you got to finish i'm like you know why would you care you know i'm like yeah, yes, you you're also, lose. <laughs> yeah you also in his employ but it, it would be interesting if he in fact turns out to be the apprentice and then there's another master um, but you know, I, I definitely like for me, unless there's going to be some really weird twist, I think that, you know, Kamir and Darth Zippy are one and the same <laughs> and that it makes sense because, you know, if you're trying to keep yourself on the down low, um, you know, it's interesting that, you know, like the Sith are trying to keep themselves, you know, on the down low until, but if you're confronting Jedi, okay, the cat's out of the bag at this mm-hmm, point. Mm-hmm. And what kind of goes interesting, like I said, we'll kind of deal with in, in the in the sort of the next topic, as it were. But, you know, now that he went ahead and just killed Kaunaka anyway, I'm like, okay, that really sort of resets things. But, you know, clearly he was ready for a fight, and it was amazing how easily he was able to dispatch um, Osha. I mean, it was mm. just like now, yeah, granted, yeah. most people are not doing that force push at 18 inches, but <laughs> she went flying and you're like, wow, I don't think I've ever seen that. So it kind of gives the impression that he's got a lot of power, but, you know, we'll see what, you know, a group of Jedi. Of course, we've already talked about how great this group is that they can't they can't keep an eye on a space beaver. <laughs> so how good really is it? Um, you know, you're counting number of lights. You're counting the number of mm-hmm. light sticks going. How many light sticks do we have in there? How many yellow light sticks do we have in there? Yeah, full thought, vibrancy was, color. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, there's enough of these guards that should know better. Um, somebody keep an eye on them. They, they, they should. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Worst team ever. Worst hunting yeah, team worst ever. Worst team ever. This, yeah, th- this is one of those like D&D type parties that no one's making it out of level two. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, there's no there's no good like ma- dungeon master and all that. Like no one's leading the party well. <laughs> they're all the they, high charisma, but dumb. Uh, anyway, so. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm on the same like as, based off what we were presented. I think Chimer is probably the best answer. Um. You know, where we leave him, he is kind of strung up by his his foot, I think, upside down. And May's like, all right, see ya. While he's like, no, no, stop, come back. (laughs) We we don't see him anymore after that. And we have no other indication of who else this character might be, aside from potentially be Basil. Um, Because we've probably lost him again at this point. (laughs) (laughs) Screw these guys, I'm out of here. (laughs) Exactly. Um, see whoever but, makes but it back on the ship. Maybe this is just an issue of modern storytelling. But I feel like we trick ourselves to not accept the obvious answer 
because it's the obvious answer. Right. I mm, think we've good point. we've been so trained by other media and other shows that when there is a mystery, that we're also going to think that it's not the most logical answer because then everyone would know that and we're trying to keep ourselves be tricked. And if we figure it out, then it 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 loses its impact when you find out the the the, the real answer. Whereas in 1999, Chief Palpatine is right there the entire time, bumbling around and um, being, you know, failing his way up to the top every step of the way, basically. <laughs> and just, you know, his plans get foiled, but he somehow finds his way up even more. He's 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 failing up. He's uh, he's every good, uh, you know, uh, leader of a corporate organization, right? He's just he's going up. Yep. Um, you know, I. I at this point, there's no better option at this point, right? There's no other person that far <laughs> along in the jungle that we've been presented to that knows about the master that could be in this situation. And uh, if I'm a betting person, which again, I would have bet that this episode would have been something about destiny rather than day. <laughs> so take that with a grain of salt. I'm going to say that you're going to you're going to you're going to rue you said that in about two episodes. Gonna... It's going to be like, oh, my gosh, that's exactly why they named it day. Yeah. And you're going to be like, why was I why was I on a on a soapbox about day? Uh, anyway, no. I'm telling you, next week's going to be night and then night. <laughs> day, night. And then the episode after will be dawn. And then we'll, we'll be <laughs> really having a wild conversation about episode titles at that point. They're gonna, I can already hear the people complaining, the ones that want to hate already. They're like, oh, what lazy episode titles? <laughs> we'll be arguing about that, which I'm like, all right. I, gonna I, come up with I welcome ju- that challenge. <laughs> episode seven is going to be Juice Box, and then they're going to be like, all right, I can't defend this show anymore, guys. Yep. You lost me. You lost, you lost me at Juice Box. <laughs> but what does the Juice Box mean, Greg? It's, <laughs> See, that's the thing. It's about what what does it mean for the overall story? Who knows? We'll find out. I think I think Basil's getting paid in Juice Boxes. Basil? I maybe- take... I, I mean, I would get paid in juice box if I could. That's the real currency around this world. <laughs> Speaking of uh, uh, more part of the about this episode, that's a horrible transition, by the way. <laughs> what, from a guy I kept bringing in Hudson Hawk into our episode that you were on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the bar was the bar was set real low for you. So. You know, the, the, the hawk still lives on. I think about that often. I still haven't seen the movie yet. But Hashtag catch the hawk, kid. What I'm gonna say. One of these days, I'll get to it, and it's gonna it's gonna solidify our friendship. Your minds are gonna be blown. I, <laughs> I say it here first, and then I'm gonna have you on the show, and you're gonna tell me, Greg, you were totally right. I'm gonna say, man, I am a convert. I am I am all on a, in on the hawk. Team hawk. Which, by the way, maybe Basil should have been a hawk instead of a beaver. Maybe mm. uh, maybe we need a, a a hawk creature in Star Wars that actually can. It would have been harder to follow <laughs> than a space beaver <laughs> with really tiny legs. That's true. That's true. Oh, Maybe not in this scenario, but on the Lego, perhaps there is room for a hawk creature. And this is why you and I should be in Star Wars, so we could write this into exactly. The, into so the I want to write the scene that that Saul goes. Everybody, get off your damn phones! We lost the beaver again. <laughs> Pay attention, kids. <laughs> make that cannon. I want to make that... up in the front there, looking at, at God knows what. He's on his phone. Get off the Instagram and get. <laughs> Pay attention. Come on now. Plo Koon, TikTok. T- 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 what are you oh. doing? Come on, guys. You had one job. Follow the beaver. Yeah. Follow the beaver. Take you out of the temple once, <laughs> and I swear, I'll never take you guys out again. Never again. And you know, never one again. person who's never been in the temple. <coughs> <coughs> yep, that shot's catching up with you, kid. Yep, got to the point where I'm starting to cough now. Um, Mage uh, has a big turn at the end of this episode. Or does Ooh. she? <laughs> Ooh. I'm gonna push back on that. After having after having gone back and watched it, I'm okay. I like where you're going with this here. I'm with you. I'm sorry, I kind of jumped over that question because no, no, May go ahead. Has an interesting change of heart. You know, over the time she's running, or we're showing that she's running, which is interesting because Manny, who I guess has been on the planet before, really isn't struggling with this. But he she's knows struggling. way too much. Yeah. You know, it's way too much. And so she's like, maybe I don't have to kill myself trying to take out a Wookiee without a weapon, mm. which I would say, kid, you got some, you got more common sense than half the Jedi that are trekking you at this point <laughs> uh, who couldn't keep an eye on the beaver. So there you go. I'm like, you're already 
I'm, I'm already putting you up there on it. But I digress. In watching it again, she's, you know, like, at first I'm like, oh, you're, I, I'm just going to turn myself in. And you're like, what? What are you talking about? And she's mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. because she has information. And she says, I okay. can I'm not going to go to prison. I'm not going to go to a, a labor camp because I got stuff they need to know. Then I'm like, aha. The line that falls a little flat a bit is that OSHA, you know, knowing OSHA's alive changes mm. everything, which is hard because, of course, at the end of episode three, you were ready to kill your, you know, your, your sibling. Or was it your sibling? Uh, or was it, you know, like, so I want to say, like, at first I took it on face value, then looking at it again, you know, and of course, you know, you watch enough of these, the earth is flat uh, reels and you start to go, you know, maybe the moon landing was faked. No, no, you guys are idiots. Uh, <laughs> let's see how many times Anthony mutes himself. Uh, this is funny. You, you, for those of you who are not, you can't watch this. Uh, he, he's losing it. Um, oh man. It's, man. it's, you know, I'm also recovering from like a, a, a cold from last week. So like I still have all this mucus in my lungs. And uh, Greg, you're making me laugh here to the point that <laughs> all it's coming back up again. But to, to, let alone to, my COVID vaccine that I took today. COVID vaccine. I'm, you know, it, it's interesting. You could say that, you know, we were we had this we had these two camps that were going, and maybe if they kept it kept up with with Basil, they'd get there first because Basil mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. Um that there was a lot of great tension that was building. You know, yeah. Same thing in episode three, there was this great tension that was building and her, her kind of coming to this realization for whatever, you know, ulterior motive she has, I think broke it maybe a little too soon because of course, then you get to the big reveal that, that, that the Wookiee has been dead already. Mm. You're like, Oh, oh I'm sorry, yeah. Jason. Yeah. Um, but in going back, I'm starting to go, okay, we're still only getting shown certain things. I want to get some conspiracy theorists here, but it's interesting. And regardless of what she thought she was going to try to pull off, it ain't going to be that way anymore because now we've got a big theater of events. We've got That's her right. inside. She, she the angered the, the, the potential master here. So things that got pushed forward. And so now she played her hand. And yeah. then I actually really like what you're putting down here, Greg. Like this is an interesting theory that I don't think I've seen online yet. So Give I'm me an hour you... and I'll eventually come up with something that makes sense. You've done but your, it... your homework on this and your many rewatches. And I'm glad you've looked at the, the finer details here to get to this point. Go here, watch it I, again. I, Go watch I, it again. I'm going to have to because I just was like, oh, that's an abrupt change for her to just like she what? You know, I can't blame Not her after doing that long trek. Right. I think right. I, too, would be like, yeah, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and right, it goes back to like, you know, how many, like we had only a certain number of scenes. We clearly see that she's been out there for a while and mm -hmm. that she's winded and she's starting to kind of think. And I'm like, yes, it, it's an mm -hmm. it's an it's an abrupt just sort of like, hey, if you want to talk abrupt, Hayden Christensen in Revenge of the Sith, where he starts to kind of go where like, you know, you're sparked, you know, like later on, the Clone Wars does so much to kind of help us to yeah. kind of go, oh, yeah. we can kind of see him connect the dots. But at the time you go, really, you kind of just twisted like that. And now you're like, all right, rise, Darth, you know, Darth Vader. There you go. Yep. But in this case, what I have I done? Go, what have I done? <laughs> I guess I'm just going to kill everyone now. I'm like, no, too, you could really stop it right now. It's and too it'll late. Be fun. I can't go back. I, I pledge myself to your teachings. <laughs> and then we have to wrestle with dead younglings for the next 20 years. Um, but hey, so I, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to take it on face value. I'm going to be like, OK, she, she she I don't still know what her motivations are. Only what we've seen. but there's still i think there's there's more to play out here and mm. it's definitely not going down the way she thought it was going to go down now and so well, everybody what regardless of what you thought it's all it's all on now yeah so like the day has turned to night at this point you know the the table that they were playing checkers at or chess at or whatever game that you think they're playing right now has been flipped up May dogs is, and cats living together yeah. mass hysteria mass hysteria exactly May is finds the deceased Kelnaka inside his uh, his hut. Who knows how long he's been dead too? That's a great you know great question there. He might have been dead this entire time. And we are introduced to the master. Right, this is where the episode concludes here. Maybe, maybe uh, we've been introduced to the master, or maybe 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 we have. Maybe it's at least it's uh, 
Maze Master. Maybe not the quote unquote master. But they reveal themselves. They push Osha and the Jedi. And then the episode cuts to black, which, you know, the episode did a lot of those transitions where it was just circles coming in. <laughs> and to be honest, I hadn't really noticed too much. I noticed the edits now more because I've been listening to mm -hmm. other podcasts and everybody's kind of been talking about it. And it's one of the nice thing. It's like, yes, yeah, you know, keep yeah. a nice range. There's so many great podcasts that are, that are out there, uh, including yours that, you know, we don't have time to talk about them all. You know, sometimes it's nice to go back and I can't wait until we, we finish our show and I can kind of go back and, and, and mm -hmm. some of these go way in depth, you know, we're, we're, we're at an hour and you got shows out there, you know, Cantina cast and all they, they're doing like two hours, two hours plus uh, yeah. somehow coffee Kenobi did it, did 30 minutes. I'm like, wow. Okay. You got off late. Um, but it was still a great episode because it still kind of gave me stuff mm -hmm. that I hadn't thought about. So regardless of whether you go long or short, uh, as, as long as you're kind of posing those questions, I'm like, yeah, you got a listener here and it's a lot of great stuff. And so many there's people, there's so much to discuss in this stuff. Yeah, exactly. So like, you know, the reveal of this character kind of blew my mind. Like, I loved how they just float down and then they're just there. And then you could, if it's almost like if you're reading a book, right? I, I can almost uh, guarantee you that they would be like, and then the Jedi felt fear. They sensed fear, right? Without it being, without, you know, Plo Koon yelling, boy, golly, I'm afraid right now, right? <laughs> you could just sense the tension and the the fear was palpable within that. Like, what is this creature that is in front of us here? So what was your reaction Greg, on first viewing? And perhaps what, is, what was your view, reaction on subsequent viewings that you had of this episode? And then ultimately, what do you think happens next? And that is the big question. It's 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 about why has he decided, why he or she has decided mm -hmm. to reveal themselves now. What is their ulterior motive? Because if, you know, do you think it's you have a high, you have the good, the best hand and that you're going to make I'm like, OK, you know, not everybody can take on. OK, I, I'm putting a, a, like they have the numbers, but do, do they have the fighting ability? Um, no, I, I don't. don't think I don't they think can't they can't even I, track Basil. There's no uh -huh. way they're going to attack on a, 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 a dark side user. I think some of this landing party is not coming back on the ship. I think a couple of them are going down a la, you know, Palpatine and Revenge of the Sith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think some a couple of them will get put through. Um, those especially who either have not had a line or are not credited. You're, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you got paid scale. It's going to get some <laughs> lightsabers to the chest. <laughs> maybe you'll get a selfie in your you can post on social media in your jedi robe to remind us two months from now that you were in it like oh yeah you were one of those idiots on there that got got, you know, got put through and even track um, basil come on guys yeah and the, the beaver the beaver had more sense than all you put together he will but survive all this <laughs> basil's definitely gonna be survive all this <laughs> you don't get to be a space tracker like that knowing like hey this is not my this is not my circus you know not my circus not my clown I'm out of here, you guys. Good luck. Yep, uh, I'm, a, I'm a civilian contractor. I'm good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I, I know when I get out of Dodge. This is not my fight. You Jedi. I, I did this Jedi job business. half up front, and one of those 400 people in that room in the you know at the Je Jedi Temple are going to have to pay me. <laughs> Someone I got my voucher. Hey, Adi Mundi, I'm coming right for you. Yeah, you're like, I need, I need just one of you clowns to sign my work order so I can get the rest of my money and clock out late. You know, later. At yeah, any yeah, but that's a good question. I think it's interesting. It also comes at, at the halfway point. None of the people who saw mm. it early know what's coming next. Yeah, no one um, knows. This is all fresh at this point on. And I really hope not that I'm not I'm not envious of those folks, but I'm like, don't give them any more. <laughs> let 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 them suffer like the rest of us and go. Yep, yep. You're all on your own, and now we're all gonna we're all in the same boat together. I think I think they've all done a really good job though of not giving away the spoilers and things like that. And, you know, all, all those folks that got it and, and uh, you know, it, it was fun. We, we got to be a little part of that by going to the premiere. We, the yeah, night we were before. Sneak, a smidge earlier than everybody else. So we had that little in the know. And it was nice to kind of be like, hey, I actually saw something that not a lot of people saw. And you're like, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. You know, I had 24 hours head start. Who cares now? Yeah. But it was still fun. And, you know, and so I'm I'm excited to what happens next. And I think it's been a fun series and I've had a lot of fun and, and uh, you know, talking to folks about it and. There's just going to be the noise that I think it's going to be like, nah, I'm just going to have, you know, like whatever. 
it's going to be over soon, folks. So you guys, you can go back. They'll, your, they'll your find turn. something else to hate. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Skeleton crew's coming, coming soon, folks. Get your hate, get your hate stuff up because I'm sure we're going to hear about that. Jeez, yeah, yeah. I will say too to the people that have watched ahead of time, we didn't get all the. You're not ready for this. Like, <laughs> there wasn't oh, that consistent no. language on like you're not ready for this? And I was like, no, I'm pretty sure I was ready for what I saw. Yeah. So pl- please, please don't ever say that to me again. I'm like, okay, I'll. I'll I'll, I'll anyway, enough. I, I've, I've gone on record enough about that. What that quote, uh, but it's okay. <laughs> that was they my, know. like, once I saw people's initial reactions of like, you know, they I went to the premiere, or they got the screeners. They were like, this is a really great show. I'm loving what they're doing. This is very much a big swing for star Wars. And I like it. Right. That's right. That's what I was hoping to hear. I didn't want this. You're not ready guys. This is going to blow your minds. And some of it has, and some of it did in bad batch too, frankly, mm-hmm. but I was ready for, all of it, frankly, there's nothing I was wouldn't say I was quote unquote unready for. <laughs> no, and and here's the thing: it's like I don't want my fandom to be crystallized. You know, it's like it's it was we were talking before about you know getting introduced to music, and mm-hmm. you were talking mm-hmm. about some of the music you're into, yep. and it's really and it's like like anything else. It's like sometimes you have some of the stuff that happens, and you just like it to always be like that, right? I wouldn't I would mind if all music. Uh, sounded like new wave or 80 stuff, but you know, nice. I can sit and listen to some of the stuff that the weekend does. And I'm going, dude, that is awesome. I remember playing a weekend song for somebody going, when was that come out? And that goes, that's eighties. You're like, no, that's, you know, so it's like all this stuff just takes what has been built upon and you put it in there and you make a new soup and you know, it'll outlive me hopefully, but I'm just like, I'm open to it. If you don't like it, that's, that's, that's fine. And I'm not going to take away your star Wars card just because you didn't like something or it didn't hit. You know, I, I would say that skeleton crew there, I am not as excited, but I'm not going to sit there and just kind of, you know, crap on it, but I get it. And I also think that yeah. some of the criticisms of this show, some are valid, you know, cause it's not, it's not one thing or the other, only the Sith belief in absolutes. There's mm-hmm. a spectrum of opinion and some of it's like, it, it's okay to criticize some things. Yeah. Just if you like, like them, that's okay more. too. It's yeah. not okay to hate people just for existing. <laughs> no. And, but it, you know, like I'm, I'm not here to tell you what to like and not like, but you know, like, Hey, some stuff that sounds kind of odd or when it hits, it's kind of odd. I think we have the luxury of being able to kind of talk it out through a program mm-hmm. and I'd hoping that the people that would listen to this would go, Oh, okay. And kind of in that same where, you know, they don't get to, you know, sometimes they don't get a chance to say, but I would say like, if you're out there and you're listening and if you're active in the community, things like that, ask your questions throw your comments out and, you know, try to, you know, start a conversation or find the groups where you can, where you can get some enjoyment back. And I think it makes your community experience and fandom a little nicer. It's fun because you get introduced to it. Folks like yourself who yes. we haven't, you know, we haven't known each other that long, but it's been really fun to kind of get to know you and, you know, have you on our show, being on your show and kind of talking us through because we all kind of learn stuff. Hey, we're all just, you know, we're students of this stuff. We're students of star Wars. We're challenged. We're being challenged by what's presented to us. We're gauging with the media, right? We're becoming literate people, just talking through the stuff and going, "Hey, that that worked. That didn't work. I like this. I love Basil. Basil's my man." Yep. You know, Oleg Padawan. Let's go. Let's get Basil and Oleg Padawan in a room and give them a Star Wars story, and we're good to go. We got the best thing ever. No one could hate it. <laughs> and I'll bet you. And and I just want to know, like, how many songs can Pip hold? That's true. You know, that's true. And, uh, there's some Scorpions tunes on it. Is there some Greta Von Fleet in it somewhere? Some Zeppelin, maybe? Maybe it's got maybe he's got some show tunes uh, yeah, in, in the library. You know, who knows? Fly me to the moon. Come on. Pip's favorite song might be Big City Nights, the greatest song of all time. Who knows? It's all possible. It's all possible. I think we need to break that down in an episode soon. I think we need to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am more than happy to have this conversation anytime. <laughs> and speaking of conversations, Greg. Thank you so much for coming on to this podcast and chatting okay. all things about day, the fourth <laughs> episode from the Acolyte. And if you want to hear more of what Greg has to say on uh, your podcast, Greg, the Rebel Base Card, where can they find you um, and, uh, you know, tell them more about your podcast? Well, thank you. Uh, so, you know, we started off in 2019 talking about cards, collecting and people in the community. Uh, I'm a big fan of trading cards. Uh, you know, I am on record. I have a lot more than I should, um, and I'm more than happy to share my my uh, my passion with folks. But I also like to to know about what people collect, how they collect, 
uh, the people behind the stuff make that stuff, the collection. And, you know, I, I would have to say that uh, one of the things we'll be charting in our journey uh, is we'll actually, I, like a 54 year old man went to the grocery store yesterday <laughs> and was asking very meekly, are, are you guys going to throw away the Oreo stuff, uh, the displays? And it took me all the courage that I had in this 54 year old body to say with a straight face, y'all going to throw that cardboard away? And after kind of getting the looks I knew I was going to have, they're like, give me your number and your name. And, you know, Nabisco has said we got to hold it up there for a few weeks. And the Darth Vader was already spoken for. Oh, uh, see, so you I weren't even the first. No, I, it might have been an employer or something like that. But I was like, you know, what? do they have to give it back? Because Greg Hildebrandt did the artwork for mm -hmm. the Oreo packaging. And he did the some of the original. Him and his brother, Tim, did the one of the original posters for Star Wars, amongst things like, you know, the Shadows of the Empire set. Right. And a lot of a lot. He has a huge catalog and, and he has been very prolific. I think he was ill recently. He had to cancel an appearance, but, you know, he was still working hard, uh, doing commissions, doing some great stuff. We had him on the podcast a few years ago, uh, me and Fabio Fiore from Tatooine Times on the 25th anniversary of Shadows of the Empire. Uh, it was oh, one brilliant. of my favorite episodes as far as like getting to talk to folks who had that hand on it, just like we, you know, we had a chance to talk with um, we had, we did our. 30th anniversary of Star Wars Galaxy, um, mm -hmm. the Galaxy set last year and had, you know, a tops product manager at the time whose name's escaping me. I'm sorry. I just, uh, okay. I'll, I'll flip but so, you know, we talk about cards, but also a few years ago, Greg Cass from Ion Cannon and I started doing kind of our version of a recap show. We wanted to do something a little sure. different, started with the Bad Batch. And so we just, we trade questions. And so, you know, you'll see in, in the Rebel Base Card feed, if you look for it in, you know, Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Uh, we do the breakfast pack or, you know, whatever we're kind of side calling it, where we do our shows where we're trading our questions on what happened uh, because everybody out there is doing some great recap stuff. This was just our way to go. What did you think about this? And we try to come up with our answers for it. And, and usually we kind of discover something. So we've been doing that for a few years, been doing most of the most of the shows. I think um, I think we missed the first couple of seasons of Mando. But it's been really fun. We have guests on. We had you on uh, when we did a, one yep, of the shows yep. on the Bad Batch and uh, went off. It, uh, I'll say it because I kept saying it during the show. It's like the show didn't have rails for it to fall off on uh, because it never had them to begin with. But it was a fun episode. Hey, it was a blast. And it, it, a lot of people enjoyed that one. I got a lot of nice feedback about that. But yeah, so I think the longer you kind of do this, whether you're like we're talking about we're at a convention or we're talking to a tops artist or we're talking to somebody who does a cool thing, whether it's, a, you know, like um, Kara DJ who does it into their larger world. Mm -hmm. uh, she does that fanzine mm -hmm. or... You know, I, I'm at Juliet Star Wars Day. So that's kind of the ride. Hopefully people can kind of come along on yeah. and uh, we have a good time. And the longer you do this, it's kind of fun because you end up in places like Nashville with a press pass going, hey, hey you never know. Talk about ICCC that's happening later this year or you're at C2 or something. So that's kind of what's happening. You can find me on uh, Twitter X uh, going through all the uh, conspiracy theories uh, at Rebel Base Card <laughs> as well as Hive, the aforementioned Hive and Blue Sky. Long live Hive. Yep. yep. Long live <laughs> Hive. I'll still keep posting uh, on Instagram and so forth and Facebook at Rebel Base Card. So you can find me there. Wonderful, Greg. And 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 yes, listeners, go check out the Rebel Base Card. Acolyte and Fluffy, uh, the, the wonderful title that you've created for the the breakfast pack for the acolyte is awesome. I love seeing the stack of pancakes in my podcast feed every time a new episode comes out. So, you know, go check that out. Even just for the pancakes, it's it's it looks that is really not a that is not stock image, and the syrup I love that, it. that's going behind it. I actually did make pancakes to take that shot. I did waste a little bit of syrup to get in the back in the sink oh. to try to get that stuff going down because I was trying to do the you know like the whole point is that we do you know, like the show is called the breakfast pack, but we used to. Like every show we did, we kind of gave it a different name, you know, questions and or breakfast, mm -hmm. but it was always kind of a breakfast in the theme. And so thanks to Jen Subchakchai for giving us the uh, Acolyte and Fluffy. I think we're, oh, that's, it's we're like, yeah, that's, that's, that works. And so, yeah, getting the pancakes and all that. And so like, why, why am I, why am I going to like swipe an image off the internet or have AI do it when I can just make the pancakes, just make them right there, the pancakes, create a whole stack, pancake. you're good to go. And then you get to eat them too afterwards, it's the two for one. You get a nice photo, a fresh photo too. And then you get to consume them. That's what I love about Star Wars. Food. It's the best part. Pancakes. It's the best part. Pancakes. Pancakes and Star Wars. What a combo. <laughs> well, folks, thank you so much for listening to this episode. All about Day, the fourth episode in the Acolyte. Of course, we'll be back next time next week with a brand new episode. Talking about episode five. Maybe it's called Night. 
Maybe it's another play on Destiny. Maybe it's back in time on Brendock. Who knows? But whatever it is, we'll be back here to discuss it in length and detail, as you always know we will. So until then, may the Force be with you, and take care. Thank you.